The Gospel of John begins with these words about Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not even comprehend it. Now those words about Jesus uh, I want to use to introduce our second essential belief here at Calvary. Uh, Yesterday we talked about uh, how we believe the Bible is the inspired and errant word of God that tells us what to believe and how to live. And, And our second essential belief, the one we're talking about today, is this. We believe there is one God revealed in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, this is the doctrine of the Trinity. Uh, And every Christian church, really uh, every church that is truly a Christian church, actually confesses this. Uh, It doesn't matter if they're Catholic, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Baptist. uh, All of us that are Bible-believing churches that have a history of faith in Jesus, uh, as revealed in Scripture, hold to the doctrine of the Trinity. Now, it's difficult to understand. It's often called the first great mystery of the Christian faith because we're monotheists. We believe in one God only, yet that God has revealed himself in three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, a lot of times it's confusing. We go, where do we get this from? Well, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Uh, We understand that Jesus is God in the flesh, revealing who God truly is to us so that we can know him in a personal way, a life-changing way. Of course, Jesus said, I'm leaving. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, who is your comforter, who is your helper, uh, who's God in us because he inhabits us and seals us, guaranteeing our salvation. So that's why uh, when we baptize, we baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, and I could talk about this for, for an hour and still not explain it in all these different ways. There's analogies that don't hold water theologically. Uh, but what I want to share with you is the practical side of this. Because a lot of people say, well, uh, when, I'm, when I'm praying, uh, who do I pray to? Do I pray to the Father? Do I pray to Jesus? Do I pray to the Lord? Do I pray to the Holy Spirit? Do I pray to God? Do I pray to Master? And, and I always tell people when they ask me that, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Because we believe in one God, three distinct persons, but they are of the same essence. They are, they are connected. They share a mind, share a heart, share, share uh, uh, the purpose. All of that perfectly in unity, even though they are distinct. And, and so when you pray, uh, pray. And it doesn't matter which title you use, which name you use, which person you're addressing, because they are all for you. God loves you. God wants to bless you. God wants to save you. God wants to heal you. God wants to lead you into life and in truth. And and if you call out to him, he's going to respond to you. If you surrender to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, he's going to lead you. When you cry out that Jesus is your Lord, he's going to save you. And, and so I want you to understand that even though uh, all churches across the, the spectrum believe this, uh, when it really matters is what you do with it. When you understand that, that the God who created this world is also the God who inhabited human flesh in the form of Jesus and, and that he loves you enough to die for you and, and give you hope and give you life, then that's a life-changing difference. When you realize that God Almighty... Uh, inhabits your life, you know, that that the Holy Spirit enters into you and claims ownership of you when you confess Jesus as Lord, and he begins changing you and teaching you and calling you to follow him. It really is a beautiful thing. So uh, if you're sitting there and you have more questions than when I started this uh, encouraging word, that's perfectly fine. Keep reading the Bible, keep seeking to understand, and keep praying uh, and, and it's okay to use the names of God interchangeably. It's okay. Uh, you're not going to get it wrong if you seek God with all your heart. He'll reveal himself to you. And, uh, and if you can't make peace with this whole one God and three persons thing, then uh, you'll, you'll be like a lot of people throughout history. And, and that's okay. Just keep loving God and seeking him. And he's, after all, the one who saves us. So in the beginning was the word. That's Jesus. 
Word was with God and the Word was God. So when you're talking to people or when you're praying, uh, friends, can I just encourage you? It's not God and Jesus. Jesus is God. So let's use one name uh, or use them correctly and, and let's be those people who really understand that uh, we believe in one God revealed in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.